Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about a very important topic that is a myocardial infarction. So what exactly is this myocardial infarction? Myocardial infarction, in a simple way we can say that the heart muscle cells, the heart is dying, simple. There is a necrosis, okay, of the myocytes of cardiac myocytes okay not the entire heart in the some part of the heart some area of the heart is undergoing necrosis death now why why the myocytes in the heart are dying because of no oxygen why there is no oxygen because of ischemia that is less blood flow why there is less blood flow might be the coronary arteries are having the atherosclerosis now imagine this is a coronary artery okay now in this coronary artery there is atherosclerotic plaque now this atherosclerotic plaque whatever is there it is undergoing rupture the atherosclerotic plaque is undergoing rupture whenever the atherosclerotic plaque in this coronary artery if it is undergoing rupture what will happen thrombosis will happen now the thrombus will completely occlude this coronary artery now whenever there is complete occlusion of the coronary artery what happens now the blood supply to the heart muscle will be hampered decreased no oxygen supply whenever there is no oxygen supply definitely the heart muscle cells or the cardiac myocytes will undergo necrosis so which blood vessel is most commonly involved in the process of myocardial infarction okay so the most common blood vessel involved so the most common blood vessel that's involved is the left anterior descending artery okay the left anterior descending artery which is a branch of the left coronary artery this LAD which is also called as a widow maker artery widow maker artery you know the reason why it is called as a widow maker artery because it causes some it, it, it makes the a female a widow and because atherosclerosis and this myocardial infarction are going to be most commonly seen in the male sex so males are going to die that makes the that leaves the female a widow so the most common blood vessel involved in the myocardial infarction is the left anterior descending artery one must know that this left anterior descending artery it is supplying which areas of the heart this lad supplies the anterior wall okay it supplies blood to the anterior wall of left ventricle not only that anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum okay anterior two-third of the interventricular septum and not only that the apex the most important region the apex the apex of the heart uh, the apex of the, the is the left ventricular region so apex of the heart the anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum and the anterior wall of the left ventricle all these regions they are getting the blood supply from the left anterior descending artery so if someone asks you anterior wall mi is because of what anterior wall mi is because of the anterior wall of the left ventricle is getting the myocardial infarction the most common blood vessel involved is left anterior descending artery because the left anterior descending artery is the one which supplies the blood to the anterior wall of the left ventricle okay it's as simple as that and we know the most common blood vessel involved. What is the least common blood vessel involved? Least common vessel involved. Okay, the least common blood vessel involved in myocardial infarction, the least common blood vessel is going to be the LCX, left circumflex artery. It's also a branch of the left common um, left coronary artery. So, left circumflex artery, it supplies the lateral wall. It supplies the lateral wall of left ventricle. Okay, so left circumflex artery is going to be least commonly involved. For example, if it involves, it causes a lateral wall. Am I as simple as that? Okay. Now after this, what else you should know? Myocardial infarction types. Okay, types. Before that, what is the most common site? Okay, most common blood vessel. You know, most common site for MI. Okay, which region is at risk? The region in the heart which is more prone to myocardial infarction is sub endocardial region. Okay, so the sub endocardial region is the most common site of the MI. Why subendocardial region? See, subendocardial region, when compared to the, all the layers of the heart, endocardium, myocardium, as well as the pericardium, the subendocardial region gets the least blood supply, normally also. 
normally the heart muscle gets the blood supply especially during the diastole okay when compared to the other organs normal organs normal organ systems in the body they will receive the blood mainly during the systole systolic period but coronary arteries the coronary perfusion especially happen during diastole and that too this is a subendocardial region later i will show you what exactly is the subendocardial region it will be there below the endocardium okay below the endocardium there is this region called as a subendocardial region this subendocardial region have the highest pressures in this region there is a higher pressure because of the higher pressure the perfusion to this area already there is higher pressure okay perfusion happens because of the pressure gradient already in the subendocardial region higher pressures are there because of the higher pressures this subendocardial region is the one which gets the least blood supply as it's getting the least blood supply it is more prone to myocardial infarction so most common site of myocardial infarction in the heart is subendocardial region okay if you want you can look at here see this is the like in you know, subendocardial region okay that's the subendocardial region which is most prone to ischemia now what are the types of mi types of myocardial infarction the two major types which you need to know for your exams are stemi and non stemi st elevation mi so mi in which the st segment is elevated okay mi in which the st segment is elevated and non st segment elevated mi in stemi stemi and non stemi so what is the difference you know it is based on the ecg okay in both the conditions there is myocardial infarction both the conditions the cardiac myocytes are dying but in one condition the st segment is elevated and the other condition st segment is non elevated now why it is so it's because in stemi which is the most common one most common variant there is a transmural infarction trans mural infarction whenever there is a transmural infarction for example if you look at the heart see both the endocardium myocardium and pericardium all the layers of the heart is undergoing necrosis there is a transmural throughout this area there is necrosis which means simple the area of necrosis in which all the layers are involved okay this is a transmural infarction whenever there is a transmural infarction you can very clearly see see the st segment is getting elevated okay see there is elevated st segment so that is called as st segment elevated mi elevation mi okay now look here there is this area of ischemia okay and infarction is there only in this particular region it's not the transmural it's not the transmural just the subendocardial region is getting ischemia and infarction now then it is called as non st elevated mi sometimes even you can see the st segment depression okay so the point which i want you to know is in stemi there is transmural infarction in non stemi there is subendocardial infarction the okay, only subendocardial region is gone dead now the point which i want you to know imagine you are having a patient now you are having a patient he is having myocardial infarction okay the blood supply to the part of the heart is not happening so some myocytes are dead now he present to you now what you will do as a doctor as thinking logically um, you have to th there is no blood supply the blood supply is not happening what you will have to do you have to reperfuse the blood so whenever you do the reperfusion okay so you are going to give the thrombolytics you are going to uh, just burst the thrombus you are going to lyse the thrombus destroy the thrombus so what happens is again you are giving back the blood supply so that is a reperfusion the important concept which i want you to know is there is something called as reperfusion injury so what exactly is the concept of reperfusion injury whenever you reperfuse the blood in certain conditions whenever you reperfuse the blood there will be more damage okay there will be restoration let me write restoration of blood flow to ischemic ischemic or infarcted area can paradoxically normally what you are thinking thinking logically are there is no blood supply let's give the blood supply black so that everything will become normal okay so paradoxically paradox means something unnatural something not expected okay so 
paradoxically it increases or worsens injury of myocytes so the point which i want to put into your mind is in the topic of reperfusion injury whenever you do reperfusion okay whenever you do the restoration of blood flow to the ischemic area more cellular damage will occur okay more cellular damage will occur because already that area is suffering with ischemia not proper enough amount of blood supply is there whenever there is no proper amount of blood supply no proper amount of oxygen the mitochondria in that particular tissue is going to be damaged the mitochondria cannot use the oxygen now properly okay so whenever you give the you give the blood back whenever you give the oxygen back to that tissue which is suffering with ischemia and hypoxia what happens is the oxygen okay the there is incomplete why this reperfusion injury is because incomplete reduction incomplete reduction of oxygen due to damage to mitochondria so the mitochondria in that particular area now they will take up the oxygen but they cannot properly reduce the oxygen because of which free radicals are generated okay that will lead to development of free radicals so this free radicals because of the reperfusion this is the important point because of the reperfusion the free radicals are going to be generated now this free radicals what they will do these free radicals will show the pathological effects by lipid peroxidation they will go and attack the cell membranes of the surrounding cells so they will cause lipid peroxidation and they will cause protein modifications and that because of the lipid peroxidation within the cell membrane that will cause damage damage to cell membrane okay so the most important point which i want to put into your mind is due to reperfusion the free radicals are going to be generated these free radicals will cause damage and that too this area is undergoing necrosis so necrosis is going to followed by inflammation so whenever you give the blood supply back what happens is the second reason for reperfusion injury is influx okay i am giving the second reason first reason first reason is development of the free radicals the second reason is influx of wbcs okay along with plasma proteins okay so plasma proteins are going to come to this area wbcs are going to come with a lot of cytokines all of them okay this is wbcs infiltrating neutrophils the plasma proteins and cytokines which are coming to the area of necrosis they will further cause damage to the surrounding cells okay they will cause further damage that will also contribute to the free radical damage okay so these are some important points which i want you to know this is something paradoxical so usually students will think whenever there is myocardial infarction okay uh, like you know the blood supply is not there we have to give the blood supply back by thrombolysis but in certain conditions whenever you do so there will be much more damage that is called as a reperfusion injury okay that's the point which i want to put into your mind now what else you should know regarding the myocardial infarction see normally whenever there is myocardial infarction there will be st segment elevation that too in certain forms of myocardial infarction that uh, like a um, uh, non stemi then there is not even my, uh, like an you know, st segment elevation see st segment elevation cannot be taken as granted that whenever there is st segment elevation ah uh, that is myocardial infarction you cannot say something like that because st segment elevation is seen in many conditions even even in pericarditis also there will be st segment elevation so just by looking at the ecg changes we cannot confirm that this is myocardial infarction we cannot do something like that okay so for the establishment of the diagnosis we will look at cardiac okay biomarkers so cardiac biomarkers are used to establish the diagnosis of mi now you think logically and tell me whenever the heart is dying the cells are dying no the cell membrane is getting damaged so the contents which are present in the myocytes 
the enzymes which are present in the myocytes, the proteins which are present in the myocytes, they are going to leak into the blood. So, whenever you see cardiac biomarkers in the blood, it indicates that the myocardial cells are undergoing damage. So, having said that, what is the earliest marker to raise? Earliest to raise. Earliest cardiac biomarker to raise in myocardial infarction is myo globin okay it's going to raise within 20 uh, within, it's sorry it's going to raise within 2 hours it's going to come back to normal in 24 hours within 24 hours it will come back to its normal value so earliest to raise is myoglobin done the other markers myoglobin completed the other markers i am talking about the other markers which will raise in myocardial infarction so it's the biomarkers which will help in diagnosis of the mi not the EKG, right? Other markers include CKMB, okay? Creatinine kinase myoglobin thing. See, this CKMB is going to raise in 2 to 4 hours and it will come back to normal value in 2 to 3 days. Important 2 to 4, uh, two to four hours it will raise and it will come back to normal in 2 to 3 days. Previously, the CKMB is, is considered as a marker of reinfarction. Okay, CKMB is a marker of reinfarction, but now it is not the case. The other markers like troponin I, okay, troponin I is going to again, yes, raise in 2 to 4 hours. It will come back to normal value in 7 to 12 days. After 7 to 12 days, okay, it will come back to its normal value. The important point is, so CKMB is not the marker of reinfarction. Now, latest updates are the troponin i is the best marker of reinfarction it is the best marker of the reinfarction and it's the most sensitive also the troponin i is considered as the most specific most sensitive Okay, most specific and most sensitive for myocardial infarction diagnosis is not the CKMB, it's not the myoglobin. Why? Because even muscle damage, normal skeletal muscle damage can cause the leakage of the myoglobin. Okay, even the skeletal muscles have myoglobin within them. So, myoglobin, CKMB, they are not the specific markers. The most specific marker is the troponin I. Troponin I raises within 2 to 4 hours and will come back after 7 days. Okay, after 7 days. Now, you can ask me, how then how it is considered as a reinfarction marker? See, normally, we will do serial monitoring. Okay, let me write here. We will do uh, the checking. We will checking the troponin I levels serially. There is serial monitoring. Serial monitoring. The patient is admitted in the hospital. We are doing the serial monitoring of tropi levels. If there is 20%, Okay, rise. Okay, so whenever you are doing the serial monitoring, okay, in regular intervals, when compared to the previous value, when compared to the previous value, if there is 20% rise in the trope I levels, it suggests, array this fellow is again have gone into the myocardial function. Okay, so 20% rise of the trope I levels suggest reinfarction. Okay, done. Next, what is the last marker to raise? The earliest marker to raise is myoglobin. Last, I used to remember with the letter L. Last to raise is LDH. Last marker to raise, again it is non-specific, LDH. Remember the cardiac myocytes, okay, the cardiac myocytes, the cardiac tissue, especially have type 1 LDH type 1 LDH is present. Now, this LDH is also going to leak and it will also, usually it will raise, okay, in 4 hours, something like that. Okay, some books mentioned 2 to 4 hours, 4 hours, it will come back in 10 days. Okay, it will come back to the normal value in 10 days. So, that's the point. 4 hours, it will raise in 4 hours, 2 to 4 hours and it will come back to normal value in 10 days. So, this is a very important area. So, whatever I have written over here, the cardiac biomarkers, the earliest to raise is the myoglobin and the last to raise is the 
lactic dehydrogenase LDH okay the most specific marker the most sensitive marker the marker of reinfarction the best marker is troponin I CKMB is no longer considered as a marker of reinfarction so how can we diagnose that there is reinfarction if the trope I levels the troponin I levels we are doing the serial monitoring of the troponin I levels if there is a 20% raise when compared to the previous value then it should be taken as the case of reinfarction right now after this what you should know in the laboratory okay not only this in the labs what else you can find is LDH ratio there is something called as flipping of LDH ratio so what is this flipping of the LDH in a normal healthy person the LDH type 2 is greater than LDH type 1 okay is so in the blood what you will see is the ldh type 2 ratio, uh, the concentration is more than the ldh1 but what is happening in myocardial infarction the cardiac myocytes are rupturing damaging necrosis is happening they are dying so whenever there is a death of this cardiac myocytes i have already told you that ldh type 1 is present in the heart cells whenever these heart cells are dying the myocytes are dying the ldh type 1 is going to leak into the blood so what happens ldh one levels will become more than the LDH2. So, this is flipping. Normally, it should be 1 greater than 2, but now 2 will be greater than 1. So, this is called as flipping. Okay. So, this is the MCQ which I want you to know. Now, after this, what are the other ways? Like, you know, if you want, if you want to know where exactly the infarction is happening for example time bad the patient is dead okay with myocardial infarction the patient is dead now you have done the autopsy now you are looking at the heart okay you are looking at the gross specimen okay now you are having a heart now you want to know where exactly is the area of infarction how can you know that this is the area which is dead that can be done with a test called as see now let me write here you have gone with autopsy Okay. Now, gross finding, I am talking, not microscopy, gross findings. So, what you will find is, see within 12 hours, okay, within 12 hours, no changes, with your eyes you cannot find, okay, no changes, okay, there are no changes, but if you want to know where exactly this infarction is happening then you have to apply a dye called as triphenyl ttp tri phenyl tetrazoleum chloride see this triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride it's a dye which is used to localize the area of myocardial infarction now look here this is the heart okay this is the heart see all this area is taking this red color okay now it's showing the red color but see there is this area where the red color is not seen so this is the area which have undergone whatever i am highlighting whatever i am showing you in this wavy like you know area that wavy area so that's the area which have undergone the myocardial infarction why sir if you ask me normally this this area okay see this area what is happening there will be ldh type 1 will be there this ldh type 1 it will react with the triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride. Now, because of this combination, whenever there is this combination, whenever this GTC, it will go and bind, bind with the LDH type 1. Yeah, there will be red color. But what happens in the area of necrosis? In the area of necrosis, the cells are dead. The LDH is leaked out. The LDH type 1 is leaked out. So, the TTC cannot bind with the LDH. So, red color cannot be there. So, that area is going to be pale in color. So, with this triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride test, you can know where exactly the myocardial infarction happened. Okay. Now, after that, what else you have to know is grass findings. Already I have discussed that. Normally, you cannot find anything within the first 12 hours. So, less than 12 hours. Okay. No grass findings. But if you want to find the area of necrosis, you have to go with the triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride dye test. Now, within 12 to 24 hours, okay. So, within 12 to 24 hours, anything is seen? Dark mottling. This patient is dead. Now, on autopsy, what you can see is that area of necrosis 
will show dark mottling. Okay, within one day, 12 to 24 hours, you can see the dark mottling. Now, in one to three days, okay, in the first three days, okay, what you can see is dark mottling will be present along with yellowish tan. Okay, so yellow tanning will be seen within one to three days along with the dark mottling. Now, three to seven days, the first week, three to seven days. With eyes, what you can see is yeah, dark mottling can be present, yellow tanning can be present along with the this thing, along with these things, there will be hyperemic borders. That area will become uh, red. The hyperemic borders, more and more blood supply will come for the fibrosis. Now imagine this patient is not dead, for example, not dead. Still he is alive. Now that area should heal, no. So the hyperemic borders will come. Okay. Now the patient is not dead. Only that part of the heart is dead. Luckily the patient is survived. So what happens? Initially there will be dark mottling will be there. Along with the dark mottling, there will be yellowish tanning with the hyperemic borders. Okay. So there will be hyperemic borders okay inflammation will kick on and healing will happen right and in two months what will happen in two months complete scarring scarring is going to be completed means complete healing so these are the gross changes which can be appreciated now what are the light microscopic findings Okay. Under light microscopy, what you will see is within the first 30 minutes, okay, in the first 30 minutes, nothing is seen, no changes. Okay, no changes. In the area of myocardial infarction, nothing is visible in the first 30 minutes. Now, 30 to 4 hours. So, from 30 minutes to 4 hours, what is appreciated? You can have wavy fibers. Wavy fibers. Okay. So, under the microscope, if you look at the cardiac myocytes, these cardiac myocytes, they are going to look like a waves. They are going to look like a wavy fibers. Now, 12, 12 hours to 1 day, 24 hours. In the first like you know in the 12 hours to 24 hours what you can see is yeah this wavy, wavy fibers are going to be present and now the inflammation has started there will be early neutrophilic infiltration so early neutrophilic infiltration will start means the neutrophils will come to uh, come into that area in the first 24 hours okay 12 to 24 hours i should say so, in the first 30 minutes, nothing is visible under the light microscopy. 30, to, uh, 30 minutes to 40, uh, 4 hours, there will be wavy fibers, uh, wavy band of fibers, I will show you under the microscopy, that will be seen. And from 12 to 24 hours, there will be wavy fibers along with early neutrophilic infiltrates will be seen. Now, from 1 day to 3 days, the first 3 days, what will be seen under the light microscopy is dense, more and more neutrophils will come. Okay. So, dense neutrophilic infiltration okay so dense and neutrophilic infiltration is going to be seen from day 1 to day 3 now from 7 to 10 days what is appreciated now from 7 days to 10 days so healing is happening so there will be formation of early granulation tissue so, early granulation tissue with the blood vessels is going to be seen. Now, 10 to 14 days. Okay. From day 10 to 14, that's almost 2 weeks completed. So, there will be maximum granulation tissue. Okay, maximum granulation tissue will be seen. And 2 months, scar tissue is going to form. Okay, fibrosis can be completed. So, these are the light microscopic changes which are visible so first 30 minutes nothing is visible 30 minutes to 4 hours there will be wavy fibers and 12 hours to 24 hours you are going to have yeah wavy fibers will be seen with the early granulation tissue one to three days maximum 
and the dense uh, sorry, not a, a really granulation tissue sorry it is a early neutrophilic infiltrate and from day 1 to day 3 there will be dense neutrophilic infiltrate from day 7 to day 10 there is early granulation tissue day 10 to day 14 maximum granulation tissue will be seen and 2 months done the scar formation is complete ok now having said that you look here the patient unfortunately the patient is dead now what you are seeing here is a dark mottling ok dark mottling now tell me dark mottling is seen when the dark mottling it is seen from ok it is a grass finding right it is a grass finding not a microscopic finding grass finding dark mottling it is seen from 12 to 24 hours 12 to 24 hours ok here you can see the dark mottling but along with that see there is a yellowish tan ok yellowish tan yellow tanning ok now this yellow tanning when it is seen this yellow tan it is seen from day 1 to day 3 3 days ok that is the important point yellow tanning is seen the arrow is please uh, concentrate on the arrow this black arrow ok yellow tan now what is appreciated over here now in this slide you are seeing the cardiac myocytes and this cardiac myocytes look they are having this waviness ok this waviness is seen even the cardiac myocytes here they are just like a wavy fibers now such kind of microscopic appearance is seen in which time zone so time period of 30 minutes to 4 hours from 30 minutes to 4 hours you will see the waviness next here what you can see is one point I have missed over there intentionally I have missed see here you are looking at the cardiac myocytes and in between the cardiac myocytes you are able to see this contraction bands ok now this is called as a, something called as hyper contracture now this hyper contracture is something seen let me write here this hyper contracture it is seen from 12 to 24 hours ok from 12 to 24 hours yes waviness of the fibers is seen early neutrophilic infiltrates are seen along with that contraction band necrosis or this contraction bands are also going to be seen ok in between the myocytes you can see this hyper contracture so important point you can very well appreciate all these areas ok these are the contraction bands this pink color bands so this is something called as let me write contraction band necrosis ok so when it is seen contraction band necrosis the contraction band necrosis it is seen from 12 to 24 hours ok contraction band necrosis is seen now look here again same the contraction band necrosis is seen and I have already taught you from 12 to 24 hours is not just the contraction band necrosis ok yes contraction band necrosis is seen from 12 to 24 hours ok no doubt not only that you can appreciate you can count these cells what are these cells these are the neutrophils so there is early neutrophilic infiltrates early in neutrophilic infiltrates but if you look under the uh, the down slide there are so many neutrophils which are present there are so many so many neutrophils are there so this is seen from day 1 to day 3 in the first 3 days ok so what you will see under the microscope there will be dense neutrophilic dense neutrophilic infiltrate is going to be seen next what you are seeing here is the area of the necrosis happened with the area of the necrosis happened with this granulation tissue all these are the blood vessels here are the blood vessels seen now these blood vessels are indicating that granulation tissue is forming now you can very uh, clearly see here these are the areas where the blood vessels are forming the new blood vessels are coming to the area of this necrosis so there is granulation tissue granulation tissue is forming in this example ok so these are the microscopic changes uh, we have completed the microscopic changes also the complications which I want you to know is because of this myocardial infarction what happens some part of the heart is dead not the entire heart only some part of the cardiac myocytes are dead so complications what are the complications that are going to be seen it is the number one complication which I want you to know is these patients after the myocardial infarction post myocardial infarction they can go into arrhythmias 
okay they can go into arrhythmias and there will be uh, ventricular cavity dilation the ventricular cavity that part of the myocardium is weakened now it cannot take the higher pressures because of that the left ventricular cavity might distend might undergo dilation that's the aneurysm okay ventricular aneurysms can be seen okay ventricular aneurysms can be seen or sometimes that area of necrosis it will rupture again the rupture can lead to uh, tamponade also sometimes okay so rupture can happen okay the area of necrosis the area of the myocardial infarction can rupture and the highest chances of rupture is seen on day 2 to 4 so within 2 to 4 days rupture can happen or after days after weeks not even days after weeks what happens is in this myocardial infarction patients they will develop pericarditis okay it's autoimmune pericarditis auto immune pericarditis this is the autoimmune pericarditis which is seen hardly uh, within one two three weeks it's called as a dressler syndrome okay so dressler syndrome is autoimmune pericarditis it's a complication because of myocardial infarction after myocardial infarction certain myocardial antigens the pericardial antigens are going to be exposed to the immune system so the immune system is producing the antibodies and these antibodies will start to attack the pericardium leading to pericarditis and this autoimmune pericarditis is called as a dressler syndrome it happens after weeks okay so these are some important points which i want you to know here you can very clearly see the left ventricular cavity it is dilating okay and forming the left ventricular aneurysm here you can see this area is undergoing necrosis okay necrosis and the rupture this is the area of this is the area of uh, necrosis and here you can very clearly see the rupture have happened and the left ventricular cavity it is forming this aneurysm dilation too much dilation leading to the aneurysm so these are some important points which i want you to know 